So this is a whole part, a whole practice I recently delivered on a C license when I was tutoring. And the focus is on rotation in midfield. So we're looking to play through midfield. And as you can see in this practice, I've probably got a 70 by 40 pitch roughly um, with 8v8 and we're playing three at the back, three, three, three in midfield, and then one player up front for each team with goalkeepers and goals in. Then there's a squared off area in the midfield, roughly 20 by 20, maybe slightly bigger or slightly smaller depending on the size and age of your players. So the basic premise is you've got to try and play through midfield. Now, what the only constraint really I've put on the players is the fullbacks are allowed to go forward and our midfielder is allowed to break in to support the strikers, but the ball must go through this midfield square first. And these midfielders must stay in the square. Okay, so as the ball comes into midfield, you can see now the player can go forward and go past the halfway line. So these players aren't allowed past the halfway line until the ball goes through the midfield. If the ball turns over to the other team, then the attack obviously just changes to the other team and they've got the same aims and the same targets. So what we're looking to do, the reason there's the 3v1 is to allow lots of opportunities for the ball to go into midfield because we're mainly looking at the movement and the combinations of the midfield players. So by creating a kind of 4v1, including the goalkeeper, it gives lots of opportunities for us to play into midfield. And then what we want to do is make sure there is support forward when the ball goes forward. So you can see as the hole progresses, it's a game type situation. The, the ball has to go in midfield and then you can look at different combinations once it's in there. Ideally, we want some good movement in midfield so that they can play forward quickly. If they can't play forward quickly straight into the striker, then we'll combine out wide. And I'd probably let this run if it's an hour long session. So this one, you can see there's a, now an overlap and an opportunity to score. So I would probably use this session for 15 minutes or so, see how they get on with it, and then probably then start moving to the part. So this is the part. It's 16 players, because it's 8v8, so I would do this twice, so I'd probably have, or if I had a, an assistant coach, I'd get the other players to work on playing forward when receiving from the goalkeeper in a different practice. But for ease, I'd set up two of these squares. This one just shows you the square that I've kept in the pitch, we're just going to use that with the 3v3 in it. Add in two target players, which are at the moment the goalkeepers that have come up. But this might be your centre back or whatever player you want it to be. So in the purpose of this 3v3, first two minutes just let them play and their aim is get the ball from target player to target player. So it doesn't matter what way they were shooting in the match, their aim is to play forward to the target players as quickly as they can. They can combine with their teammates and you let that run for a few minutes. Then I'll introduce my first rule is, you must always have one player in each part of the pitch, each half of the pitch. So this is where pitch geography is important and we use the halfway line. You always got to have one player each side of the halfway line. Now it doesn't matter who that is, they can rotate and move as much as they want. And I'll give them two seconds, a two second gap of, if everyone goes in, I'll give them two seconds for someone to recognise to get out. If not, I'll give a free kick to the other team. Okay, so what we're then looking to do is play forward as much as we can. My next rule I will put in there now that you will now see is you must rotate when you play the ball to a target player. So if you individually pass the ball to a target player, you must go into the other half. And what that does then is create rotations that players have to make. And it'll make lots of stimulate lots of situations where there's rotation going on. Because of the rule where you could have one person in each half, naturally, normally if someone moves out, someone will move back in. So this player here has played it from his own half to that player out there and gone into that half. Okay, so they must rotate after the pass. You notice again, players made that pass rotate, but now this time someone's gone into their position. Now the coaching points I start to use at this time are think about where you're running. Because a lot of players will actually run into the exact bit of space that the players just played a pass from. And usually there's a defender in that position when that happens. So it's about when you make your run, drop into the area of space where you can probably receive on your back foot to try and play forward. So it's looking for the right areas to rotate in. We're then looking at sometimes if they bounce it back, then go out and someone come in so you get more rotation. But this pass you've just seen made is our next coaching point. 
which is all about can you receive on your back foot to play forward. So if, you can, if you're under a lot of pressure, you can bounce it back and rotate. But if you're not under any pressure, get your body shape open so that you can see both players, both target players. I always say try and see both target players without having to turn your head too much because that means you naturally got at an angle. That will then allow you for the next coaching point is which is to play forward as quickly as you possibly can. So we've covered rotation, we've covered movement into space. Then we'll start talking about body shape and trying to play forward. And then the last coaching point I'll kind of put into these players in the part and the rotation is their body shape as they make runs forward. Because a lot of players will run off the ball and turn their back to the ball. They need to try and angle their run or open their body up a little bit so as they're running, they can still keep an eye on the ball. Once we've done that, we then go back into the hole. And what will normally happen for the first couple of minutes, all everything you just worked on in the midfield will just disappear and won't happen. And it's about just reminding them, what have we just worked on? What have we just worked on in this part? And then encourage them to start getting the rotations going. And the key to is this of going back to the hole is you can check their learning. What have they learned? What have they developed? So use this hole then for another 15, 20 minutes, drip feed back in information that you need. And now if you want to, if they're ready, you can start talking about the bigger picture of, right, once you have rotated in midfield, how are we then going to combine further forwards? How will we use the wing backs coming up, but still have that focus of you've got to play through midfield, forcing players to rotate.